Welcome to the Criteria B uh, video. Now this is the rogue criteria um, for paper two because we haven't seen this uh, criteria in any other part of the IB course whereas the other four we absolutely have and we're very used to. And I'm not sure whether it's for this reason but this tends to be the hardest one for students. Um, of course it's in there because the questions are very difficult for paper two and so to save you like memorizing certain essays and things like that they need to include this one um, to for you to be able to show a full awareness of the text that you studied so criteria b is how you respond to the question that you've chosen remember you will have six questions um, so you have to choose one that applies to the two or three in HL's case text that you studied from part three uh, tr hopefully there'll be one that suits your text um, so you can pick the one that is most relevant or the one that you feel you're able to answer the best and criteria B is split into two parts that is the understanding of the main expectations and how relevant is the response to these expectations so for SL in order, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> just have a sip of water. You can read the SL and HL yourselves. But essentially, to summarize the differences, HL, you have to be excellent rather than very good. Sorry to tell you that. So the first tip or first thing you should do really uh, for criteria B is unpack the questions fully uh, so that you are able to then plan your answer. So read the question really carefully. Remember in the exam you have five minutes reading time. You only have to read six questions in that time. Then pick the one that you're going to do. So once you've read it, think carefully about every aspect of that question. If we just have a look at this one. <coughs> in what ways do the two works you have studied inform and or content, question or subvert norms, conventions or traditions? So we would unpack it. We would think, what does it mean by ways? Well, ways that norms and conventions and traditions are subverted or questioned. So our two uh, texts are, are really relevant to this question in content and in form. So then we can unpack the form bit. Well, 1984 has a uh, untraditional ending in the fact that Winston is not successful. There's a, an unusual narrative voice. And the genre, in terms of it being a dystopian, um, again, there's parts of that which are not conventional. And Persephilis is more obvious in terms of that because it is a graphic novel. And also the narrative voice, um, because it's a graphic novel, we get to see dis different aspects of the narrative voice. So we get to see Margie as a child through the use of speech bubbles, but also, also Marjane as an adult through the use of captions. And, of course, there's content, loads of content in both. So thought crime is a way that people uh, subvert the norms in 1984. Love is another way. The diary and how Big Brother tried to uh, eradicate memory and the past. And Persephilis, there's protests. Uh, love uh, goes against traditional views music and fashion so once we've unpacked that question <clears throat> we can look for our big chunkies um, obviously if you want to hear more about big chunkies and mini chunkies which we're going to talk a lot about in this video then you can watch the criteria d video um, but you probably know what i'm referring to by now so we're going to have a look at form as just one of them so 
I found some stuff for both, so I'm going to just make that one big chunky. Uh, and then protagonists who question authority. So we have seen that as well it, when we've unpacked the question and how love and sex play a role in uh, subverting norms and traditions. So we've thought of our big chunkies and we've planned a few ideas. Oh, I do apologise. Let me just try and go back. And we've also thought of a few ideas during our uh, planning time of what we could include in those paragraphs for our text focus paragraphs. Okay, so now that's an, an example of a question that you'll get that has one thing to look at. In this case, it was subverting norms conventions and traditions but more than likely you will get a question that has two parts to it and that becomes a bit trickier so for example if we have the question show how aspects of the two works you have studied can be better understood with a knowledge of the time and context in which they were written we have two parts to that question we've got the aspects and how they can be better understood in the context so we would need to look at by aspects we mean like themes plot lines characters symbols anything any parts of the novel essentially and better understood with the knowledge of the time and context in which they were written so understanding their significance and meaning um, and obviously we start thinking about the context that they were written so 1984 we know a lot about context if you want some revision on that you can see the criteria a video and persephilis as well and so then we can come up with our big chunkies. Now, when you've got a two-part question, I think the best thing to do is have your big chunkies as just one of the parts. Okay, so we're going to choose for from this part, love and sex as one of the aspects, oppressive regime as another one of the aspects, and then how the protagonist's rebellious desires as another one of the aspects. I hope that makes sense. So once we've unpacked the question fully and planned our big chunkies, we now need to make sure our answer is relevant to all aspects of the question. And this is where our mini chunkies come in. So we're going to focus on this part for questions that have two parts to them. So if we go back to that question that we looked at before, this one. So one of our aspects was love and sex. So we're going to have a look at that. So one of our big chunky would be in both novels the idea of love can be better understood given the context of the novels notice the second part even though this is our big chunky we have included the second part but it's very vague so it may as well not be there but the main thing that our big chunky is doing is giving that aspect that we planned So in 1984, Winston and Julia have an illicit love affair that goes against the strict rules of the party. Winston's desire for this kind of human, in, human interaction is better understood in the context of Orwell's socialist views and belief in freedom. So notice what we've done there then. We have given a bit more detail in our mini chunky about the aspect 
And we've brought in the second part of the question here. How can it be better understood in terms of context? So our mini chunky really hits home with those two parts of the question. And our second mini chunky. Similarly, although Marjane's sexual relationships are not wholly forbidden, many people in the strict Islamic society of Iran disapprove of sex outside of marriage. By understanding the contextual authoritarian society of Iran during this period and the more liberal society Marjane lived in in Austria, we are able to see how the protagonist faces conflicted ideas about love and sex. So again, we've got more detail in our mini chunky about that aspect that we've identified in our big chunky and then we make a more detailed explanation about that second part of the question so i hope that makes sense it's a really difficult skill to master being able to constantly make links to two parts of a question especially when you're then being asked to analyze on top of that and show knowledge but practice makes perfect so let's have another um, a look at another example many works are concerned with human suffering how has this concern been expressed in a way that engages audience of those times and or places in at least two of the works you studied so I think you guys did this question and one of the main things that came out from marking your work was that second part of the question was really lacking so you, in all other aspects, they were great, and you used your big chunkies to identify human suffering, how that's shown. But in terms of the engaging audiences of various times and or places, that wasn't quite um, shown throughout. So we would have, again, our big chunky relation to the theme of love so that's the type of human suffering we are focusing on for this big chunky in Persephilis the trappy portrays a number of failed relationships she goes through with different men Marjane suffers mostly as a result of the relationship she has with Reza and Marcus one during her time in Austria and one when she was back in Iran so that aspect of human suffering is given more detail in our mini chunky and as these relationships occur in a totally in totally different settings audiences from different places will be able to see how the suffering experienced by love can be different depending on society so we've given more detail in our mini chunky about the second part of the question we do this again when we go to our 1984 paragraph. We give more detail about the big chunky topic. So we see only one true relationship containing love and the suffering that comes as a result of the betrayal of this love under the hands of Big Brother. And then we give some more detail about the second part of the question. As Orwell wrote this novel, to act as a warning for the devastating impact that a totalitarian regime can have, mostly influenced by experiences in Russia and Germany. Audiences who have experienced more oppressive regimes might identify with restrictions on love more personally and therefore sympathise with this form of suffering. Okay. Oh, let's move on. So, one more example. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just a really important uh, aspect to get right. Um, so, show how belief or faith is represented in at least two of the works you have studied and how this aspect might be interpreted or understood in different historical, cultural or social settings. So, again, our big chunky identifies the belief or faith so both novels depict protagonists who believe strongly in free will so 
So we know our main topic is going to be free will. And then our mini chunky for Persephilis would be something like, in Persephilis, Margie wants to exercise her free will against her parents who forbid her from protesting when she is younger and the Islamic regime who enforced the idea of conservatism. In the social context of Margie's childhood, there was frequent uproar and protests, making the streets dangerous. This means even her parents, active revolutionaries, had to exercise strict parameters on free will within the household. This might make younger readers sympathise with the protagonist's frustration in trying to fight for her belief in free will, whilst also having age-related boundaries enforced on her. So, the first part of this mini chunky links to this, which we know links to this. So we're going to discuss the free will uh, that she exercises against her parents and the Islamic re regime. And then the second part of our mini chunky is going to link to this. So how it might be understood in different historical, cultural or social contexts. Okay. So the last thing we need to do then, we've unpacked the question fully to make sure we fully understand it and planned. Then we have made sure that we have shown an awareness of both parts of the question using our big chunkies and mini chunkies. And now we need to make sure that our answer is relevant to those things throughout. So. We need to do this in our analysis, which is the main part of our paragraphs. And we know, or we should know, if you want to more detail about any of these steps, then you can either look at criteria A video for step one and criteria C video for step two. So step one of analysis is to contextualize your evidence. Step two, oh dear, sorry, is to analyze techniques and their effects. And step three is our linking. Now when we say linking, we mean to the question and topic sentence. So obviously, we are going to look at that today and how you can use, make sure this step three is good in order to show that you're answering both parts of the question. Like I said, more about step one in criteria A video and more about step two in criteria C video. So if we uh, go back, if we have a look at the question, sorry, looking closely at how weakness and strength are represented in at least two works you have studied, discuss the significance of the relationship between the two. So we have divided the question up into the two parts like we would do in stage one. And then we've looked at our big chunky and our mini chunky for 1984, like we would do in stage two. And now we need to see how we can, for stage three of this tip video, I need to stop talking about steps and stages and criteria. I know, I'm sorry. Um, but stage three is looking at how step three of your analysis uh, can back all this up that we've done so far. So we've got the idea that uh, strength and weakness, we're going to have a look at 
how that's presented through the theme of betrayal. And then the significance of the relationship between the two, we've explored more in our mini chunky, and we've said that betrayal um, is shown through the use of the totalitarian government, using its power to make people in society weak. Winston and Julia's initial love is not only a way to make um, is not only a way of making of them initiating their own form of power as a means of exercising their own freedom, but also is an act of betrayal against the party. So we are showing how the weak gain power through the use of betrayal. So weak gaining power is a relationship between the two. Guys, I, I know it sounds really confusing and it's really hard, but honestly, you've been really improving on your paper twos that you've been submitting. So just keep at it and please don't panic. So then we have step one, contextualizing evidence. Winston realizes that their love is the force that would tear the party to pieces. Now, if you've watched the Criteria A video, you will know that this contextualization isn't great. Um, I'm not saying where, when, what part of the novel, whose, um, but I just needed to fit it on this PowerPoint slide. So you will know that that contextualization of that quote isn't great. Um, but that's not what this video is focusing on. So step two, we then analyze Orwell's use of metaphorical language and violent imagery creates an image of strength and highlights Winston's strength in a society where Big Brother is the dominant and usually violent ruler. So now we've done that, we've got our quote, we've got our analysis, we now need to make sure that we're showing how that links to this. So this act of betrayal against the party, so we're being really specific in how that links to the Big Chunky, shows that the rebellious citizens who are weak within the, the context can feel that they have more strength. And that links to the relationship between the two. So we have shown how the weak can exercise their strength. Then we obviously give another piece of evidence to support our argument. However, when Winston is captured and taken to room 101, he is shown to betray his love and that which initially gave him power, Julia. Winston shouts, do it to Julia, repeatedly to O'Brien when faced with the threat of rats. So that's a better contextualized quote there. Uh, the use of repetition and exclamation mark highlights Winston's desperation and weakness at this part. And again, we need to make that link to this. So he has betrayed his love of Julia, thus becoming weak, and Big Brother showing that they have all the power. So again, we've shown how now there's a weakness and there's a powerful force, and that shows the relationship between the two. I hope that makes sense. So we're now going to have a look at an example from a student from last year. Um, we're just going to look at one of her mini chunkies about 1984, um, which I think does what we've looked at really well. So this, she chose to do the question that you guys have just done, actually, which I think is like, how means of authority and power are shown. Um, and then the second part of the question was, and their effectiveness. So we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna try and use the pink and the yellow again, just so we know what the colors refer to uh, for both those parts of the question. So the big chunky, by the way, uh, was fear. So we start off with, in 1984, Fear is also used to maintain 
the power dynamics and relationship between the weak and the strong. So we have got, oh, okay, might need to move that down a bit. So we've got fear is used to maintain the power dynamics and relationship between the weak and the strong. Fear mongering specifically is a tactic utilized by the in a party as a way to disseminate and bolster its ideology among the masses. So what we've got there is talking about why it's used, which was the second part of the question. So, and then the student goes on to give uh, the example and analyze techniques, which I'm not going to read. You can always pause the video to read that part. I'm just going to skip straight to the second part of the question. So we've got, <coughs> sorry, wrong colour. So we've got the analysis and then it says, sorry guys, having technical issues. Right, we are doing the people's emotions simply through a two-minute activity. The government is able to direct it towards anyone and anything. What does that say? Gaining or maintaining? Indefinite control. So we have got the link to the big chunky about fear. And the infliction of fear is also viewed through the characterization of Parsons. So we know we're going on to the next piece of evidence. Sorry, the, um, the yellow part here is shown before the pink bit, and that's okay. Uh, so it serves to demonstrate the effectiveness of the party's strategy. So it doesn't matter what order you do it in, but we can see both of the parts of the question are identified here and then as soon as we go on to our next piece of evidence here we kind of give it an introduction linking to that topic of fear and then after our second piece of oh no So sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we are introduced to our second piece of evidence. So the infliction of fear is also viewed through the characterization of Parsons. And then we go through and analyze our evidence. So, and then we make our link back to the question. So this is really well done here by the student. Uh, we see this uh, sorry. <laughs> this serves as a larger representation of the atmosphere the government creates. Constant fear and the perpetual presence of, an, of it even in one's own family and home. So again, we've got that clear link to fear of this specific piece of evidence. So the question of whether the party strategies are here are effective or not requires examination of its purposes in carrying them out. Even though Parsons, a 
strongly adheres to the party's ideology. Oh, I can just about. Mm. He still ends up punished, which would have one to believe or lead, sorry, lead one to believe. which would lead one to believe that several of the means through which the party exercises its power is futile. Orwell purposefully conveys this in order to project the party's ruthlessness and obsession towards total control. The party's methods of inflicting fear may not be efficient, but they maybe helps to cement its absolute authority and power so we've got really good links there to both parts of the question here is really detailed about whether it's effective and we can see links to power and fear which is our big chunky and also really looks at a perceptive analysis of its effectiveness. Anyway, I hope that's helped in your criteria B, how to answer the question. Thanks for watching.